Hey again everybody, Dr. Bolin here with our microbiology shorts. This is just a condensation of our uh, shorts that we go over in our larger videos uh, talking about microorganisms. Um, I just want to invite you to come watch our larger videos if you want a more in-depth explanation of the topic. Uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, below uh, or donate to my Patreon if you like these videos. So let's get started. Our story takes place in the cold white north. And I put a cold scene for this bacteria because, well, listeria grows in the cold. And that's something you need to remember. About 4 to 10 degrees Celsius. Now, 4 to 10 degrees Celsius is probably a little warmer than when you get snow. But if you remember that it grows in the cold, that's, that's pretty good to know for your step. Okay, here comes our snake friend, and he's got a cute little hat on. But this purple snake is our recurring symbol for gram-positive rods. And he doesn't have a mask, and he doesn't have a mask because it is not an obligate anaerobe. It is a facultative anaerobe. It certainly does grow in aerobic conditions. And to reflect that, I put this cloud blowing air. So it can grow in aerobic conditions. Listeria can grow in aerobic conditions. Now notice our little sick kid here has a cat friend, and the cat friend is there to remind you that this is a catalase positive organism. Now that's not a super important aspect of listeria, but it is important when you're talking about immunodeficiency. So chronic granulomatous disease, for instance, makes you susceptible to catalase positive organisms. So I added that in here for good measure. Now this little kid is doing what kids like to do in the cold, and that is doing cartwheels in the, maybe not everyone, but he's having fun out there and he's twirling around because listeria has tumbling motility. So this little kid tumbling reminds you that listeria has tumbling motility. And then here comes Dr. Lister the Eskimo. Now the real Dr. Lister wasn't an Eskimo, he was a British person. Uh, but I put the Eskimo here because I don't think it snows that much in in Britain. So this is Dr. Lister the Eskimo. List Doctor the real Dr. Lister was the namesake of Listeria. He was a, a pioneer. Joseph Lister was a pioneer in antiseptic surgery. Now Dr. Lister is an old man, and that's to remind you that Listeria, in particular, uh, Listeria meningitis, occurs in people among others that are very old. And he's also carrying a bottle of Listerine, also named for Joseph Lister. And that's to remind you that uh, this is not only Listerine, this is Listerine Zero or Listerine O. Uh, that's to remind you of the, uh, the virulence factor Listeria Lysin O, which helps break down phagosomes and promotes intracellular survival. Now here comes his little assistant, this little girl here, and she is a child. Not quite the age where you get listeria meningitis, but reminds you that the very, very young can get listeria meningitis. We're talking infants under three months. And she's carrying raw milk and deli meats for lunch. Probably not some, something you'd want to give somebody with listeria, uh, but it is something that can cause listeria, in particular listeria gastroenteritis. So raw milk for unpasteurized milk and these cold cuts here for deli meats. Now here comes the little boy's mom. And the mom is pregnant and has a baby. Pregnant women with a sick baby. To remind you that it can be passed to a fetus. It can also cause spontaneous abortion and granulomatosis infantaseptica. This little kid here is sick, and sick reminds you of immunocompromised patients. Now, I could have put a bottle of whiskey next to him, but that's not appropriate for little kids. But that would remind you that listeria meningitis can also happen in patients who are alcoholics. Notice the head compress here. That's to remind you that listeria causes meningitis or meningoencephalitis. Now over these igloos is a roof that kind of looks like an intestine. And that will remind you that listeria causes gastroenteritis in anyone. 
Remember, that's the delayed onset gastroenteritis, often with flu-like symptoms that occurs approximately three weeks after eating the contaminated food. Oh, here we got this little husky here. I have a German Shepherd, so I really like huskies because they're pretty similar. And the husky is poking his way out of one igloo and fixing to go into another. And that reminds you that not only is this facultatively intracellular, but it can move from cell to cell via those actin rockets. And they are being entertained by the music coming from this amp, which reminds you that the treatment for listeria meningitis is ampicillin in addition to your general regimen, your empiric regimen uh, for, uh, for meningitis. So remember a third generation cephalosporin plus vancomycin uh, plus ampicillin. You don't need to use vancomycin in children, uh, or in infants rather, uh, but you will use ampicillin along with, uh, with gentamicin for, for infants.